they uh, had it in a uh, special spot waiting for me to keep it safe. So, fragile handle with care. We better buckle this sucker up. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping by this evening. Mazzy, as some of you guys were wondering where she's been at, where have you been, <laughs> sissy? It's been really cold outside. Do you like the cold? She doesn't like the cold at all. Do you like the pigs? She doesn't. <laughs> so cold, pigs, Mazzy's out. She likes to eat the pigs. Do you like bacon? <laughs> what? Not if it comes from pigs. <laughs> Where else would bacon come from? Bacon's your favorite. So Mazzy does love bacon, but they wanted to say hi real quick. So as we promised on the last video, we wanted to let you guys know who guessed the closest for our pigs. Gary said it was Price is Right rule, so it's the one closest without going over. We had lots of pretty close guesses, um, but only one who was the closest without going over. So the winner is... Just kidding. We're not going to get to that yet. <laughs> so before we do talk about the winner and let you know who won and let you know what that final weight is, Cassie and I wanted to let you know three things that we learned about raising pigs for the first time on our homestead. And we thought it would be valuable to share this because we're basically newbies at raising pigs. So some of the other local YouTubers have raised pigs and we've enjoyed watching them. So we thought it was a good idea to try our own. And they make it look easy. So you might as well try. Yeah, <laughs> but we did have a lot of fun. So we're going to go through just the, the first three things that came to our minds um, that we learned about raising pigs. So you want to go first? Yeah, the first thing is it is very important to get your processing date, your processor date, um, before you even buy the pig, really. Uh, used to it wasn't like that, but now it is. If you can't get a date, you shouldn't buy a pig. There's a lot of, if you get on Craigslist, things like that, you'll see pigs for really cheap, ready to go, because they can't take them anywhere. So make sure before you go get your pig that you can get a date. And this may be a unique problem just for 2020. Um, I don't think this has been that big of an issue before, but with the pandemic and everything going on, uh, especially if you're going to get one this year to raise, I would say right now would be a great time to get you a date um, for processing or just get a plan for processing if you're going to do it yourself. Um, because this fall, uh, whenever you call to get a date, there's a good chance that the dates will be full. Yeah, so we're already planning for our next round of pigs to buy March, April sometime. And we haven't even bought them yet, but two days ago we called and we got our dates for November. So um, just something to plan ahead for and make sure you're prepared. And I'll take this time to tell you, if you see all these Christmas cards behind us, that's because we enjoy seeing all of our subscribers and all of our friends and family that send us cards. And I think it's going to be the last Christmas decoration to come down. Yeah, it might stay there for a while. Uh, There's a few more rolls. If you don't see yours, it's up there somewhere. But um, we've really enjoyed getting those cards and things from you and enjoy uh, seeing them. So uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, the second thing that we learned about raising pigs, and we didn't start off with this, but about a couple months into it, we were able to get an automatic feeder. Um, I'm parents who actually we raised a pig for um, purchased the feeder and I wasn't, I was on the fence about investing in one because they're pretty expensive. We didn't feel it was important until we got it and now we wouldn't have pigs without it. Yeah, it would definitely be worth the investment. I would buy one in a heartbeat if I was considering it because it made our lives so much easier. And maybe because we had four. If we only had one pig or something, it might have been different. Before the feeder, we were going over there two or two, three times a day making sure they had some feed and, um, making sure everything was good. Once we got the automatic feeder, life was so much easier. So the third thing is what we found and we've heard other people say is that the male pigs grow faster than the females. And we would 100% agree. Going off of the weight from the two females we had and the two males, we would say that is 100% accurate. So is it a huge difference? I wouldn't say it's a huge difference, but we did see a difference. So if you're trying to get them by a certain weight by a certain time, um, we noticed that the males do grow faster than the females. 
And just to see how much faster, I think that's a nice segue to the actual weight of the pig. So as I told you on the last video, the contest was three pigs going across the scale that I took off to freezer camp. How much did they weigh? A combined weight on the hoof. So that means hoof? Pigs have hooves? Um, I think so. So on the foot, whatever. <laughs> uh, the pigs... <clears throat> they had toenails. <laughs> yeah, they had toenails. So this is the combined weight of the pigs when they got out of the trailer and went onto the scales. So our smallest was hot that weighed in at 315 pounds and she was a female and she was the female she was um the smaller of the two when we got them the two spotted pigs so hot turned out to be the uh least of the three pigs in the growth and she was a female so that goes along with our reasons of choosing males if you're going to grow them out just to butcher and so coming in second um if you remember Salt was 15 pounds when we got him. He was a red wattle, large black hog mix, and he came in at 370 pounds. And that was a big pig. <laughs> he was probably the longest pig that we had, and he uh, was probably the most gentle to start off with. Yes. He was a really joy to raise, um, but he was second biggest. So coming in at the top of the list was Sauce. Our spotted pig weighed 300 and 78 pounds. So he just barely beat Salt. Yeah, just by eight pounds. And Salt actually started off smaller than him. He was younger when we got him. So so I think Salt was probably catching up and he probably would have passed him pretty soon. Yeah, so people say, what kind of breed should we get? Or this or that. I think you should get what you can afford. Salt is a more expensive um, pig because he's of the red wattle, and you guys can look that up, why people think they're better because of foraging, and they can live off the pasture and all that. But he was 15 pounds when we got him, and um, the others were probably, what, 40 or 50? Yeah, I think they were around and he, 40 pounds. And he caught up and almost and surpassed one of them. So um, it just depends on what you want. They're small pigs for people that have small um, fencing. So just do your research, get what you can afford, try it if you didn't like it, try a different breed but we were happy with all we had three different breeds and we were happy with all of them yep they all grew and i have a feeling they're all going to taste great so if you do your math and you can do it quickly then you know the combined weight of the pigs was 1063 pounds we had tons of guesses yeah we had yep. some really good guesses some really bad guesses but that's okay if you don't know pigs and it's hard to tell on a camera um, but we had some really good guesses. Yeah, so just going off of the video, I know it's probably almost impossible to get an accurate weight, but honestly, it wasn't that easy in person either. <laughs> I didn't really know what to expect, so I didn't try to put a number with them. I thought they were all over 300 pounds. Uh, and again, we didn't have the butcher date we wanted, or it probably would have been in mid-November, and they probably would have been closer to between 250 and 300 pounds. But I'm not going to complain because that's just a little extra meat, and I bet it will taste good. Uh, the lucky winner. So We well, had so many close ones, but with a guess of 1,060. 1,060 pounds. Three pounds off. The winner was Lori J. So congratulations, Lori. We have a Walker Farm Fam hat that we um, have already messaged you about and hopefully get that address and we'll send it to you soon. So thank you so much, Lori, for watching. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for that lucky guess, 1,060 pounds. This was Price is Right rules. <laughs> so if you guessed 1,065 or 1,062. I think there was 1,065. I mean, if you guessed 1,065, you were over. If you would have <laughs> guessed 1,062, you would have won. But uh, Lori was the closest without going over. So congratulations, Lori. We're going to get this hat to you just as soon as possible. And if you were looking at this hat and saying, man, I really <laughs> wish that I could get one of those, just head on over to walkerfarmfam.com and you can submit an order and we'll get a hat out to you just as quick as possible with a special coloring sheet or surprise from probably Mazzy. She loves coloring those sheets. Yes, down below we got links to lots of things. And one of those is to our um, webpage with our... Um, merchandise on it. So thank you to everyone who guessed. We had so many guesses, like over 400, I think, and probably counting um, still because people watch stuff late. But um, it is the guessing is closed, 
and Lori is the winner. And we want to thank you guys so much for doing that. We have something else extra special to show you in this video. So come along. All right, so we got it. They uh, had it in a uh, special spot waiting for me to keep it safe. So fragile handle with care. We better buckle this sucker up. All right, now we're ready. You ready to go? Hold on tight. feel like it's the gift that keeps on giving it just keeps having more and more layers so this is the first time we've ever got eggs in the mail we had an awesome subscriber uh, Ray send us these so I'm gonna open some more I'm trying to be careful because last thing I want to do is break these things but uh I talked to Chad over at Adler Farms they, they need to set for 24 to 36 hours depending on what they're in I need to put them in a like egg carton uh, pointy side down and let them rest so let's get into it and see what we got. Man down. That's probably the AM Samani. <laughs> okay, so I got 14 eggs. Um, I think they were sending 12, but probably they send a few extras just in case, like the one you saw. Um, I said man down and one had busted. Uh, that's gonna happen. These are eggs and they are shipped. Um, let's see, where'd they come from? So it looks like they came from Indiana. So there's no telling how many people touched these even though it said fragile all over the package. Um, it's gonna happen. Um, this one right here is ginormous. It's still got some poop on it so I know it's fresh. And then um, there's different things. I, I was told that this is a barnyard mix but there's supposed to be some am samani eggs in here those of you that watched my video when i went and got the am samanis some said that they lay black eggs everything i find on the internet and people who have am samani say that that is a myth so online it says it's supposed to be like a light pink colored egg there's a few in there like that like this one um this one's not white, but it's not dark. So we'll just have to see. There's just a couple of different ones like that. And then you have some that are browner, tanner, however you want to say it. So we're going to let these set and rest for 24 to 36 hours. Then we'll put them in my hatchmate. I got a problem though. With the turners, the hatchmate only holds nine chicken eggs if they're normal size. So... I think I'm going to do a little experiment 
and you'll see tomorrow how I'm gonna fit all these eggs in an incubator that only holds nine. So we'll let these rest. We'll check back in with you tomorrow or whenever uh, when we actually put these inside. So we are super appreciative to Ray for sending these to us. He did not have to do that. Thank you so much. The kids are excited to hatch some more eggs. And just like last time, we'll see what we got once they hatch because it's kind of a surprise. Hey guys, it is the next day. It has been about 30 hours since I opened up the eggs, turned them pointy side down. Um, so you're, you need to let them set 24 to 36 hours from what I've been told and what I researched. So it is time to put them in the incubator. I have taken each egg and wrote an O and an X um, with a pencil. The reason I'm doing that is I'm gonna have to hand turn these eggs this time. So my um, incubator does have an egg turner, but I got too many eggs that will then what will fit in. So I'm gonna experiment a little and I'm gonna hand turn it. So I told you yesterday I have a little bit of a problem. That's the problem I was talking about. Absolutely love this hatchmate that uh, Backyard Farm sent me. Only complaint would be that it doesn't hold more than nine eggs, but I knew that going into it and I only wanted a small one. <laughs> Gary just <laughs> walked in. Thank you. <laughs> and brought me some flowers. Thank you. You're welcome. Never know about that one. Might be chocolate, might be flowers. So he knows how to make my day. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Um, love this hatchmate. If I had a complaint, it would be that it only holds nine eggs. But like I said, I knew that going into it. I didn't want a huge one. I just wanted something small we could do in the house, have fun with. But if you get 12 um, eggs in a dozen, you gotta figure out, hmm, what am I not gonna use? So anyway, I'm gonna hand turn them, see how that works out. Yeah, y'all might be saying, no, don't do that, but that's what I'm gonna do this round. So let's put them in the incubator, then we'll talk some more. All right, so this is the hatchmate. As you can see, it's already on. That's because I already have some eggs in the incubator. So I'm gonna turn it off real quick since I'm gonna be setting it down. To turn it off, you just unplug it show you this hatchmate up close and like I said I love it I had never hatched anything until a few months ago when hatchmate sent um, when backyard farm sent this to us and I got the eggs um, from Sawyer Ridge farm and I put nine in and eight hatched out the one that didn't hatch was a double yoker so had great success when I absolutely had no idea what I was doing comes with a little book it tells you exactly what to do it's awesome also have this hydrometer that they sent me um, I've been told that you don't have to have this, but I like it because it makes me feel a lot more comfortable that everything inside is like it should be. So like I said, I already have some eggs in here. These are, which I'm going to have to write on them. These are some rose comb Benny eggs that Ranger's friend, um, who goes by Buckshot, I'm going to have to get him in a video sometime, gave us. And so they've been in here in the incubator um, for about a week now actually might candle them in a little bit and see if there's even anything forming and I'm just going to add the ones that Ray sent us in with these and I'm just going to turn them by hand two or three times a day. I need to figure out for sure what I'm supposed to do on that. So let's get the rest put in. We'll go from there. Okay, so this one right here is kind of oddly shaped. I don't know if you can see, but it's got, yeah, this blemish in it. It's got some cracks. So I'm not gonna use it because I've heard the worst thing to happen is have one bust and they smell. So I'm not gonna use it just because we got plenty of eggs in here and those blemishes, I'm just not real sure about it. So I'm gonna get them all turned to X. Then in the morning, we'll turn them to O.
You guys follow along as we hatch more eggs and we put the backyard farms hatchmate to the test again. So here's where I've put the incubator for um, this time around. Last time I had it in the utility room and it was by a window. It still did awesome, but lots of you were saying not to have it by the window. So I'm in the pantry. On the back, we've made this bar where we can put different appliances and things. And so um, it works out perfect. And we hang our fly swatters. Um, but it works out perfect. It keeps them in here. And um, it's just really going well. There's the hydrometer. And up here shows um, the degrees it's set at. So I possibly have too many eggs in there. I'm not able to use the egg turner right now. But once I candle the eggs and see if there's some that aren't growing, we'll go from there and we'll get it figured out. I'm just doing something a little different because I didn't want to waste any of the eggs that people had given us. So um, I'll show you as time goes on, as we candle, as we get into lockdown, and I'll show you the hatch rate. So we're really excited to have some more baby chicks here on the homestead, and we can't wait to show you the end result. I want to say another thank you to Ray. Thank you so much for sending us those eggs. You didn't have to do that. We truly, truly appreciate it. Um, we are so thankful for that. And we are thankful for all of our amazing subscribers and those who watch us. You all have a great, great day and God bless.